Let's talk about recoverable errors in Rust. Why do we need the recoverable errors? Because sometimes we don't want to stop the program just because something went wrong. A classic example is when we want to access, read, create files, something might go wrong. We want to handle this. We don't want the program to stop executing. For example, if the user didn't provide the file or maybe for some reason this file was not created or it was not uh, accessible. Accessible. We want to handle the error in a more convenient way. We will see some examples soon. How does Rust handle these recoverable errors? Rust does this with an enum, an enum called result. The result can have two values, OK, T, and error, E. Result uses something called generics. We will have soon a lesson about generics. T is the concrete value of the result. Otherwise, we'll have an error that has a type of error, can have a message. There are also, of course, many different types of errors. Let's start with an example where we can use recoverable errors. As I said, we will use files, so creating, reading files. It's also a great example, so we know how we can, for example, read from a file in Rust. It can also be interesting. We will probably have a specific lesson about files, but let's just get started. Let's define a variable like this. We can call this greeting from file you can use this file double colon open and then a file called open.txt the compiler is already complaining because we need to import use std fs file we don't have any hello.txt file here cargo run okay we don't get an error we are not reading from the file we are just trying to access a file. This is just to open a file and it can return a file or an error and this is very important. So we are not reading in the file yet. To actually have the error I should start using this file. We can have something like this, like this, let greeting file and here we use a match statement. We have a lesson about match statement. I'm a huge fan of match statements. Here we have two options, okay and error. In case I have this file in input, it's okay, and then I will do something with that. In case I have an error, I invoke the panic macro cargo run, and we have this error. Problem opening the file, which is the message that I have here. Okay, we don't have this file on this project. Is there a way to handle this? Or maybe to handle different errors in different ways? Let's say that instead of panicking here, in case I want to open this hello.txt file, I want to create this file. In case I have an error, not a random error, but an error that tells me that it didn't find the file, we can create it. First of all, we can import something called error kind here in the IO error kind. This has different types of error. Here, instead of panicking, let's try to create the Yes, I think this is correct. Match statement with this kind of error. And then in case we have error kind of type not found, so file not found, match file create. And this is funny because also when we create a file, this can fail. <laughs> Maybe we don't have enough permission to create a file or the our drive is full or any kind of problem. Match file create. We try to create a file called hello.txt and we have error handling for the creation of the file. For other types of errors, I do, let's say, a more generic error here. Check here at the top right, cargo run. And as you can see here, it created an hello.txt file. This file has been created by this line 28. Error kind not found, file create. Very interesting and it also we are starting to get more familiar on how we can handle files in Rust. I want to delete this hello.txt file because now I want to try something a bit different. I want to show you that you don't need the match statement to handle all of this. We can also use simple if-else statements. As an alternative, as an approach, we can use this if-else like this. So greeting file if we have an error of type not 
found, we create the file. And in case we have an error, we panic. Otherwise, we have just a problem in opening the file. Probably we don't have enough permission. Cargo run. We should see here again an hello.txt file created. Let's see. Yes, here we have this hello.txt file. We didn't use the match statements here. We used the if else statement. Before we keep going, I want to show you a couple of shortcuts. So I want to talk about unwrap and expect. Let greeting from file. We can have file open dot unwrap. Unwrap basically is this shortcut that returns the value if we have OK. Otherwise, it panics. Uh, it depends on the situation. In some cases, it might be easier to use uh, match statement or an if else if you want something more i think readable you want to type less there is also this uh, this one let's try to delete this hello.txt file and try to run this and you should get a panic yes it panicked because it didn't have the result as okay there is also another option which is the expect which is very similar to the unwrap expect the difference is that the expect can have a message for example could not open file cargo run we have a panic but we also have this custom message. We can explain in a better way what's going on. We can return an error so we can understand what happened. And with unwrap, we just have the panic and that's it. Now I want to talk about propagating errors. Let's say that we want to actually read from this file. So let's do something a bit more complicated. We need another function. We'll call this function read username from file result string then we define the get file we have a match statement we have this function which is to read a username from a file i want to not just get the file but also read something inside the file we will see this soon we see a couple of errors here which is okay we need to import std io stands for input output of course and then we can import self and read we try to get this file and then we create a string and then we use this method read to string to put inside this s string inside this s file and then of course here we need to call the function we'll have the result and then we have another match statement we can have the username or an error we need to create this file in this case i'm not handling the case that I don't have the hello.txt file. Hello.txt. Inside this hello.txt, I put my name, Francesco, cargo run. I can read the value inside this hello.txt. I created this get file, then I read from this, I created a string, and then I read from this string, and this method returns a string or an error. It's very important to read the signature here. So we can either be a string or an error. So a string in case I have an output. Otherwise, this returns an error, and then this is handled by another function. You can also have different types of errors here. In this case, I will return any kind of error. This works, but maybe the syntax is not the best. Is there a better way to write this code? There is. I can use the question mark operator. I really like this operator. I want to comment all of this and I can show you how we can achieve the same result, leaving the same function in the main function, using this question mark operator. We can define a file like this, let the mutable, we can have Let's use a different uh, variable name, file open. So we open the file and you can see the question mark here at the end, line 42. Then we define a username with a new string. We can read from the username from file that now we know it has a file. Okay, username. Let's see if we have the same result. We have the same output, but instead of 11 lines of code, we have just four lines of code using this question mark 
operator. We have this on line 42 and 44. The question mark operator can only be used in functions that return a result. They are used to simplify the syntax. It's very powerful once you get used, otherwise you can even miss this question mark here. But once you understand how it's used, it's a great way to simplify our code. And it also will return also the error in case I have the error. It's very, very powerful. Now, can we do even better? Less than four lines of code. Let mute username as a new string, file, open. We can concatenate the question mark operator, open hello txt question mark dot read to string username username just three lines of code let's try and it works let's see if we can do this in one line of code we are losing readability but we are getting something which is way more concise fs which stands for file system of course you can use this read to string method hello txt without the semicolon at the end and indeed, we have the same behavior, but just with one line of code instead of 11. Usually when we use Rust, we need to deal a lot with uh, reading files, uh, writing on files. We need uh, a very convenient and maybe one-liner way to have access uh, to a file. Of course, uh, here we are losing the handling of the errors. In case we want, you know, just to read one line from one file once that we know that we have, we can also use uh, this uh, shortcut. I told you that the question mark operator needs a um, result in the signature. Let's play just with the main function. Before we had another function, then we'll call this function from the main function. Can we use the question mark operator in the main function? Let greeting file like we did before, file open like this, and then a question mark at the end. Let's try to use the question mark operator in the main function. Let's see, cargo run, and we see we have an error here. Cannot use the question mark operator in a function that returns void. By default, the main function doesn't have a result error in the signature. The problem here is that the question mark operator can only be used in a function that has a result or option in the signature. And this is not what we have in the default main function. Can we solve this? We can. By default, the main function has this signature, but we can change this. We can have result, and then we can return here instead of IO error, something that we'll see later in this course, which is a box dynamic dyn error. By changing this signature, we should be allowed to use this question mark in the main function. I need to import this. And of course, at the end, I need to also do this. Okay. In this way, I can handle this in the main function. Cargo run. Okay, so this works. Let's try to print the value of the hello.txt file here. As usual, we create a new string, then we read, and then we print. Here we define this variable not immutable. Cargo run. And we have greeting Francesco in this case because the printl n here is printl n greeting and the name. This maybe it seems a bit tricky. Basically, we changed the signature of the main function. This is a very interesting concept. The main function is a special function because it's the entry point, but we can even override the signature and use box dynamic error to return an error and being able to use the question mark operator.